Next up, we have a true internet celebrity. One of the world's most popular zoologists whom I have been a long time fan of. I was lucky enough to visit him for an interview. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Darren Nash of the famous tetrapod zoology Toys fame. And things. On display, on shelves. Hmm. But it just has not... It just, it just can't, can't be done anymore. I just do not have the room for them. I can't have them and the, and the books and everything. Did you want to have a look? This table will be just covered. It's just oh yeah, it can make the table larger. Oops. So, this is the the collection. <laughs> I think I should blame my grandmother for starting this collection. Um, when I was three or four years old, I was given one or two of these, and over the years my parents gave me additional zoo animals and as I got older I carried on collecting zoo animals and um, by the time I was in my late teenage years I pretty much had a collection of pathological size this isn't everything, this is just some of the, some of the pieces how many pieces this, do you have? I can't remember, I can't remember, um, a couple of thousand I think uh, everything has gone hand in hand. An interest in the literature, an interest in real animals, seeing them in the wild, seeing them in zoos, seeing them in museums, and an interest in the toys has kind of always gone uh, in, in parallel. And while most of these are just toys, they're not, they don't really mean anything, a lot of them are silly, a lot of them are inaccurate, and they're actually useful for the purposes of teaching people about what some of these animals look like, just because it's it's better for people, people can relate to three-dimensional objects that they can actually hold and manipulate than they can, more than they can to a picture sometimes. So there is a practical application for some of these models. But um, most of them are just for fun and they don't really serve any purpose other than for my amusement really. And I have no idea why I have this interest or where it came from. There's no, there's no formative event, it's just something that's always, that's always been there. And I've, I've always been equally interested in, um, you know, pets, mundane animals, cats, dogs, mice, zoo animals, and I've been interested at the same time in more exotic creatures, you know, extinct things and animals of the past, obscure creatures that I've, I've never seen and I probably never will. I have quite, quite a visual way of thinking about animals, and um, I've always been interested in wanting to know, you know, what animals look like and um, certainly I've been inspired by by artistic depictions of mm -hmm. fossil animals um, basically because I, I was determined to become a zoologist right? I wanted mm -hmm. to do that and there are two ways to get to be a zoologist one is to go through biology the other way is to go through geology and that's the route I ended up taking I went through geology, went into paleontology and now I'm kind of doing exactly you know, what I wanted to, studying animals both living and extinct animals. Fame didn't catch up with Darren Nash until he began to share his thoughts on the internet. I, I actually think that my um, my uh, involvement in, in the whole blogosphere is actually quite different from most other people's in that it's entirely random. Um, I was on the internet one evening, you know, one o'clock in the morning or whatever, and I uh, looked at a blog written by one of my friends and I won't mention his name because it will go to his head and um, I went to bed and I couldn't sleep and um, and I thought I could start a blog yeah I'm gonna start a blog and I got out of bed at half past one in the morning and I went downstairs and I started a blog and I called it Tetrapod Zoology uh, so I had all these ideas and started writing about you know my own uh, what I was researching um, things that were in the the press or in the scientific literature and I was after about a week I was telling my brother wow I've got 30 people have visited my biography <laughs> and then it was like 300 people have visited my biography and you know within within like three or four months I had like 600 readers and I thought wow that's you know people checking it every day that's amazing like every other good thing on the internet Darren's blog soon attracted a lively community I don't know how many people visit every day but there definitely is a hard core of like 50 people that you recognize every day and you know their names and their signatures and you know the sort of things they tend to be interested in or comment on and um, yeah there's there's a real community that's sort of built up around tetrapod zoology and other people are just in a totally different world 
I mean that they're in that they visit my world, but they're off you know doing something completely different that I don't know anything about, and I find that really interesting. This kind of overlap. It was this community that enabled Darren to make one of the most exciting discoveries on flying reptiles. After reading stuff about as dark kids, this Cretaceous group of pterosaurs back in the, the 80s. What is the basis for thinking that these animals behave like this? I mean, this animal has got a wingspan of over 10 metres. Its head is about 2 metres long. It's huge. And how is it supposed to be... What is it supposed to be doing? It's meant to be trawling its lower jaw through the water and then contacting a fish and then just scooping it up. You know, it didn't make sense to me then. It doesn't make sense to me now. And Mark Witten and I have gone through all the, you know, all the characters involved and all the features, all the anatomical details of these animals and um, show that the, the, the skin feeding hypothesis isn't really defensible. I can remember thinking then that what we know about their anatomy indicates that, that they were probably kind of stork-like semi-terrestrial animals. But yeah, they're flying, they're flying a lot, they're flying from A to B, but um, their main kind of, whatever they're doing ecologically is um, their foraging is is terrestrial they're terrestrial foragers and I can't remember why but on the Tetrapod Zoology blog in 2006 something I can't remember what it was but it might have been a discussion with Mark Witten who's doing his PhD on pterosaurs something inspired me to write up my thoughts on this and indulge in a bit of hypothesis testing and it occurred to me that I had actually done in that in a blog post, a, a post on the internet written for fun, I'd actually done the better part of the work in terms of proper hypothesis testing and in terms of you know producing a proper write up of this study. Mark and I agreed that we should get a paper out of it and that's eventually what we did. We just I mean the press press response has been unprecedented, you know? Mm, it has, yeah. I was sent press releases by our press department at the university from the Maldives. Uh, India, China, Japan. Do Where you was... have any clippings around or? No, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. It, this for me, this has been an, entirely a digital event. Really, quite, really, quite exciting. The fact that we now have these totally online journals, uh, and the PLOS journals, Public Library of Science, a hundred percent openly available and that's great because it means your research is more widely disseminated more people in general are going to read it than ever before and um, it occurred to me recently that a lot of venues that we used to use for news are now entirely redundant because something that takes a couple of months to get into a magazine has already become widely dispersed disseminated and you know well known about via via the internet and the blogosphere so we're talking a lot more we're just exchanging information a lot more and the information is accessible to us a lot more. We can now all be self-publicists because of the blogosphere. Without anyone helping you, you can do it all by yourself. And um, if you're good at writing and good at publicising your stuff, then, well, you can become... <laughs> you can get your research out there and hope to become well-known among not only your colleagues, but people in general. OK. Well, this seems to be it. Thank you for everything. <laughs>